Chris here from Video Maker. In lieu of having videos from the show floor at NAB, we met with our, the brands via video conferencing and we taped those presentations so that you could know about the newest equipment and newest gear coming out right now. So that's what's in this video and all of the other videos we shot are in a playlist. You'll be able to find them here in this card or in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Victoria Nice. I'm a senior product manager on After Effects, and I'm here today to show you some of what's coming in After Effects at Max this week. We are really excited about this release. In fact, it's one of the biggest releases of After Effects in many years, uh, and that's because there's years of work that's going into it, and it is all centered around multi-frame rendering. Uh, team has touched millions of lines of code to make the whole application truly natively multi-threaded and able to take advantage of all of your system hardware in a way that After Effects has never been able to before. And the result is that you're gonna see a significant speed boost. On good hardware, it's up to four times faster rendering. And this isn't just rendering at final export, this is also while you're previewing and uh, After Effects can even start rendering in the background now while you're not using it. So I'll take you through some of those features and what this looks like. Let me share my screen. First thing you may notice here is I have this new render time column. And in fact, I have a frame that took almost eight seconds to render here. Uh, this is a new feature we call the Composition Profiler. And this will show you what actual thing in your project is slowing you down. So it's not just about that final processing time. It's also about giving you the information you need to create more efficient projects because there's always five different ways to do something in After Effects. And now you can actually see which one's the fastest. So in this case, I can see that I've got a couple of pre-comps here that are really pretty slow. And maybe I don't need those on while I'm working. I'm just designing and maybe I want to figure out the timing of my animation. So I'm going to turn those off for now and it's going to re-render and that now has gone from almost eight seconds to 241 milliseconds. So you can see that you can make huge changes, figure out different ways to do stuff or just turn things off temporarily while you're working on something else and then turn them back on at the end when you're ready to render. So I'll keep those off for now because this is a demo and we want to go fast. So this column is really helpful and it does show you not just the layer times that things took to render, but if you twirl something down that has effects, like if I turn these back on, I have effects on these and I could swirl this down and see, well, oh wow, almost two seconds of this is coming from my effects. And I can see it's actually the set mat effect here. Uh, and maybe there's something where I could go further and turn and just turn off just that effect. In this case, I'm going to temporarily disable these two layers, but you can see you get a lot of detail. Effects, expressions, masks, things like that. All of that will show up there. And it really helps you get a better sense of your project or if you're given someone else's project, their project and why things are the way they are. So let's turn those off. Let's make this a little faster to render. Uh, and you can see here, this will also change over time. If I go to different frames, it's gonna recalculate. It's gonna give me an accurate picture of my project. But while I've been talking to you, I could have been rendering in the background. And so I'm gonna go up here and go to preview, and I'm gonna enable cache frames when idle. And the only reason I turned this off is because when I'm demoing, if I start talking, if I'm talking about something else, uh, by the time I get back, my project's already rendered. Uh, and so you can see here, if you look at the cache indicator bar here, that After Effects is rendering on multiple cores running in the background. And running in the background is not going to use all of your system resources. I'm also sharing my screen. I'm on video chat. I have a bunch of apps open. Uh, so it's only going to use a reduced set of my system resources in a case like this. Uh, and it's going to run in the background. And very often, I go to write an email. I get up to get a cup of coffee. I come back. My whole project is already ready to render. Uh, so this is a huge time saver by using the idle power of your machine, using your machine while you're not using it. Uh, so this is another piece of this that's really going to save you a lot of time. But I'm ready to preview this. I want to just hit play. So I'm going to go back to the beginning here, and I'm going to make sure I've turned off my audio because I don't want to blast everyone's eardrums. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to start previewing. Now watch up here in the info panel. You'll see how many frames are rendering at once. And sometimes on this project, I'm at one or two frames, and that's because it's fairly heavy. Uh, I'm doing other stuff. And After Effects is actually looking at how my system resource usage, it's looking at the complexity of the project, uh, it's looking at the available hardware, and it's calculating all of that together to figure out how many frames it can render at once for maximum performance. 
So right now for this beginning bit, while I'm using a lot of system resources for other stuff, uh, it's maybe only gonna be two or three frames, but then there's other parts of this project where it's gonna get up to 10 or 16, and it's gonna do that dynamically. This is, we call behind the scenes, we call this dynamic composition analysis, uh, but it is a big time saver. It's all automatic optimization. And so given that you don't have to worry about tuning in how many, how much RAM per core, how many cores, you don't have to do any of that. After Effects will do it for you. Uh, so that's another piece of this that adds a lot of power. Uh, oh, let me turn off motion blur. That'll give us a nice speed for uh, getting set up for a demo. Um, I'll just actually start rendering this in the render queue while we're at it. So you can see here, I've turned off uh, motion blur just to get us a little bit faster render. Now it's going two or three frames per second. Uh, it's totally dynamic based on what is in or out of your composition. But let's say we're ready to start actually rendering this. So I'm gonna just do, let's say the first six seconds. We're gonna not do the whole thing. I'm gonna add this to my render queue. And this is the redesigned render queue. The top of this looks pretty different. Uh, we've also changed the default output. So now it's high quality, which is based on ProRes, uh, makes it easier to get a standard file that's one you can deliver to your collaborators. So I'm gonna hit render. I'm just gonna render this to my desktop. And you will see that bright green bar. And that bright green bar is showing all the cores I'm rendering on. Now, if I click down in my info panel, you can see I'm actually up to seven frames per second. Now it's gonna use more of my system power. Uh, and I get just the info I need to know with the render queue. Now there's a lot less stuff at the top, uh, but it's the stuff, that, the stuff that's still there is the stuff that you care about. And, I've also checked this little notify checkbox, uh, as well as notify when queue completes. And fingers crossed, this is actually gonna show up on the correct monitor. In fact, it's probably gonna show up on the app. Uh, but what this will do is send me a note when it's done. So if I had a big, I was rendering something for a huge event screen and it was gonna take maybe even a couple hours to render. Oh, no, I think it's gone to my other screen. There would be a notification here that would pop up and tell me that after it's finished rendering, and you can see it on my phone. There it is, queue complete. After Effects, all of compositions in your render queue have finished rendering. Uh, if you have a smartwatch, notifications will go to your watch as well. Uh, and this all works through the Creative Cloud app. So you, all you have to do is install the app. It's on iOS or Android. Log in with your same Adobe ID that you use on your desktop, and you will automatically get uh, notifications sent right to you when your renders are done. Uh, also, if like you run out of hard drive space and there's an error, it'll let you know about that as well. So you can confidently walk away from your machine, go do something else entirely, and After Effects will let you know what it's up to. Uh, so again, saving time even when you're not using it. And really, all of this is about saving time. That's the goal of all of these features together. Uh, it is a whole collection of things designed to really speed up your workflow. And when you're going, when you're able to preview four times faster, render four times faster, uh, that adds up. And when you're rendering in the background, you spend so much less time watching progress bars. Even if we've made the progress bar prettier, you shouldn't have to look at it as much. So we're really excited about this release because it changes the way that you work in After Effects. And it just makes it able to keep up with you and keep up with the speed of your thoughts and your creativity. So we're really excited about this one and we know our users are going to be as well. All right, so here's the end page. You now have two choices. You can either have the video that YouTube has chosen for you or the video that we have chosen for you. Hopefully either one of them is good, but uh, you never know. They could change your life or not. Thanks for watching, bye.